Number one, hate to talk about football, but fuck it for a little bit. United are through to the knockout phases of Champions League uh, via our less than inspiring victory against young boys the other day um and yeah man the less said about that the better really i think isn't it what 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 can be said that hasn't been said already um regarding this win puts my friend down here before i start of eating my face and shit um what a strange strange time to be a united fan eh like it's a fucking bizarre bizarre world to be a united fan right now let me see if i can get this out of the way boom 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 Move this, move that. Why doesn't it just load normally? Come on. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, what a weird time to be a United fan. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what else to say, man. Um, what we got here? Mourinho's an embarrassment. Yeah, he is an embarrassment. I say for the most part. I think he's very aware of it, though. So I don't think we're saying anything about him that he's not going to be aware of. I think. It's just his natural reaction. He just needs to defend himself, he feels like, justifiably because of, you know, of all the stuff that's been, all the mud's been thrown at his name. And I think he's got some reasons, some valid reasons behind um, his kind of outrage with the media and how he's so snipey and he's always kind of got a chip on his shoulder. I think he's got legitimate reasons to be annoyed because, you know, he's, he looks around the managerial landscape at the moment, right, with the top managers most of whom are quite are newly appointed managers. Some of them are quite young in some respects, right? Um, and he doesn't see many people who have kind of won as many honours as he has, right? And he comes from an era where many managers were judged upon trophies they won, right? You look at someone like a... Uh, who's a good example? You look at someone like a... Carlo Ancelotti, for instance, right? He gets hired for jobs mainly because of the titles he's won in different countries. Luis van Gaal for, a mo- for another... For another example, too, was another one who kind of got hired because he won trophies in various different countries. There was an era when that was very much the reason why managers were hired because of the, you know, of the trophies that they were able to amass in the in the trophy cabinet of said club. But nowadays, football's kind of progressed for the most part. Maybe it's because of social media, because you have to kind of like, you know. Uh, clips are made and shared across Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and stuff so you can't necessarily show clips of like parking a bus football right it doesn't really work that well there you kind of have to show like quick counter-attacking football one touch uh, sweeping moves um, very clever formation play like you have to show that kind of stuff in order to make it entertaining so maybe some of the big wigs of these clubs football directors are looking at it and thinking you know what I'd much rather hire a sexy manager like a uh, Bielsa at Leeds, right, who plays really weird attacking football where you're, you know, you're, you're effectively playing only two defenders at the back, right, and everyone else is playing up front, right, um, fast-flowing attacking football, one touch, um, you'd much rather see that and not have any trophies in your cabinet and get all the eyes on you, get sponsors to kind of line up and kind of want to sponsor you. And, you know, and the the leagues, especially in the England, the leagues probably pay as much, if not more, than what um, these uh, trophies pay. Trophies kind of add, you know, a lot of allure. They can be a good legacy. Um, it's good for the club overall. You might tie in with sponsorship. But, you know, these clubs sometimes parachute payments and money bonuses to stay in the Premier League is quite often very, very high, very, very steep. A lot more, it's probably a lot more worth your hassle than trying to win the FA Cup. So they hire sexy managers and then Mourinho's probably looking at it thinking, you know what, I'm out of... He's probably not in vogue at the moment, but he feels like his trophies um, should allow him a kind of a grace that he's not being granted with the English media. But I just think in general, you know, the English media have had it with him. They've just, you know, he's not their darling anymore. Um, in, in in the same way that, you know, remember when pundits used to make excuse after excuse for Arsenal and Arsenal Wenger. There's just some people in the media who they just have their favourites. And, you know, he might not have never been a, a, a critic favourite anyway, even when Flag Ferguson was at a club. Man, you know, oh, I hate it. So it's funny to see how these pundits are kind of lauding and, you know, waxing lyrical about the old Serge Ferguson days, like as if they all liked him. They hated him because he used to ban them from their from these press conferences. But for the most part, people hate Man United anyway. Plus, Mourinho is not necessarily playing the brand of football people like. That's exciting. And he calls people out on, on their shit, which, which journalists hate anyway. They hate being questioned, right? They just they think they're the fucking authority when it comes to all things football, and they just know just as but just when they just, when they know just as much, just as much as we do as fans. So, yeah, he's an embarrassment, but you know, so are the press and the journalists that kind of cover him and blow up minute things into big things and stuff, or twist these words in order to kind of get him in a gotcha moment. So they're playing a weird game for the most most of them for the most part. Uh, 
we, we share playing football. Yeah, we're shit at playing football. We're not very good. Um, I think that's very evident to say. Whether or not it's a recruitment thing, whether or not it's a player thing, personnel thing, whether it's a coaching thing, I don't know. But there's no hiding behind it. We're not good at playing football. We don't look good at playing football. I don't think anyone... You know, you know, it's a good example, a good kind of barometer to see how shit we are at football. When I went to watch Man I play the other week at a pub, sometimes they'll have like, you know, a running order of games. People left when the Man United game came on. They just left and went home. They generally left. Like, I was like, oh, okay. And that was different before you'd see, of course, people would leave if it wasn't a West Ham or Arsenal or Chelsea game, right? Because it's mostly in London. But for the most part, people would hang around for the United game. But everyone just left. <laughs> I was like, wow. That's how far we've fallen where randoms in a pub are like, you know what? I'd rather, I'd, rather, I'd much rather go home and, you know, and chill with my wife and family, even though I'm in half drunk, then fucking watch Man United play, which, you know, I can't blame them towards that. Um, we have separate teams playing. Yep, I'd agree with that too. Um, that um, There's definitely separate teams. You, you see that a lot with them um, young, especially when we're at home because the pitch is so wide. But especially against young boys, you saw you saw defenders doing quite a good job. Uh, De Gea pulled off a fucking fabulous save towards the end of the game that kind of kept us in the game and allowed us to kind of win anyway in general because it was no no at that time. You see the defenders doing a good job of keeping, uh, of stopping young boys from scoring, but not necessarily doing a good job going forward. Like Shaw and Valencia were quite timid in their forward play. Uh, Shaw had some opportunities to kind of go forward, but did, was quite wasteful. So you see them do a good job of defending. You see the, the midfielders doing one job where they're trying to pass the ball to each other and move the ball around. And then you see the attackers trying to make things happen at the end. It kind of reminds me of like Sunday League football. Like there's some, the gap is so wide between the back four uh, the middle, f- the 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 midfield three and the front three. It's just massive. It's huge. You can't it, you can't escape how big of a chas- chasm it is. And there's no real rhyme or reason or method of play that kind of joins all of us together. It doesn't really work. It's just like the attackers try and cross the ball, float balls in, do a little one two outside the area to score. The midfielders try and pass the ball in around amongst them, and defenders try and defend. It's just like a absolute clusterfuck of a situation. So that doesn't work. And probably as a sad, it's more of a bad indictment on Mourinho than it is of the players because there's a they're, they're definitely being set up wrong. Or they de- or Mourinho's not doing a good enough job in in um, kind of getting his message across. And um, what else here? Mourinho celebrating. I didn't really get I, that. It was a bit cringe. I don't really. I don't really. I'm not really that annoyed by it. Um, if anything, it shows. It shows. Even though he tries to pretend like it's not his fault, he tries to deflect um, fault. He tries to always blame the players. He always tries to point the finger back at the press whenever they question his methods and saying that they don't know what they're talking about. And if it's so easy, why don't you try it? Kind of insinuating that sort of thing. Even though he does all these di- um, the diversion tactics or deflecting tactics, that smashing of the um, Lucas Aid bottles, wherever they may be on the, on the floor, did prove that he is under pressure. He's feeling the pressure. He knows his job's on the line, for real, for real. And he knows that if he loses his job at United, then it's more an indictment on his coaching style than it is of United being run poorly. We are run poorly. I think the whole world knows we're run poorly. But I think Mourinho's um, prowess or Mourinho's powers as a manager will show that they're starting to wane. Because what effectively his failure in United is proving is that without the money, without the infrastructure, he can't perform. He can't do the job that a lot of people thought he could do, where he could come into a club and kind of put the pieces into play, which is very hard to do. It's not a really, it's not, it's, it's a talent that I, I think a lot of people underestimate how difficult it is to do. I think it's a lot more easy to be a coach just to come in and handle the football side of it, right? Not even the football business, the football side of it, right? Let alone the operational side of the business of, of football. But just to do, be a coach is probably a lot more hard, a lot more easier and comes up more natural to most um, football managers because that's what they fell in love with the game with, right? But to be a coach. But in this current era that we're living in, or this, we got we got split. We got some managers who come in and just be the coach and we got some managers who come in and are asked to kind of, learn, you know, um, use the club as a blank canvas and just do as they please. And unfortunately, Mourinho was kind of given a blank canvas and didn't really know what to do, right? Especially when they weren't the football people at the club that he thought he needed, right? Ed Woodward is is a lot of things, but he's not football people, right? So you've got a club that has a lot of aging um, players on the books, a lot of players who've been given long contracts who shouldn't have been given long contracts, um, a lot of just like, you know, uh, round pegs for square holes and stuff. So he had a lot of work to, to kind of reconstruct or rebuild that team, that club overall, and he failed. So that will be a real dent to his ego if he loses his job because of that because it will definitely highlight just how far behind he slipped at the current era now it would be amazing if he could leave united or in the process of the end of the season he could kind of realize you know what maybe to change my ways and and do this and do that in order to kind of get us back where you need to get to but i don't think he's going to do that he's too set in his ways 
And if anything, he's been proven right here and there, right? He gets a victory away at home at Juventus when no one thought we were going to win. We win last minute against Young Boys, even though they're playing shit. We get through the Champions League. Like, he, he's, he keeps giving, he kept, he kept giving, um, he gets these false feedback loops that keep kind of reaffirming his um, stubbornness. So it's hard for him to change, I think, because, you know, we haven't fallen flat on our face just yet. We're like, stum- we're stumbling over, you know? With that guy in Liverpool Street Station who's kind of coming back home after a work night out and he's had way too much to drink and he's walking like a zombie. Like he's, he looks like he's about to fall over, but he's got that drunk balance, you know, where even when he's just about to tip over, he's kind of body, you know, his body gets him back on balance again. That's where we are. Until we fall flat on our face, I don't think anyone kind of realise just how far behind we've fallen. Um, what else? His post-match interviews? Yeah, man. He's just a fucking prick, isn't it, really? He's creating a bit of a shit atmosphere. I think, if anything, those interviews got to prove that, you know, some people say, oh, the players are getting paid enough and they should just perform and get paid money. I think that interview goes to prove it because, you know, if you work in a, in a workplace where you don't like the manager, look how hard it is just to kind of look at them in the eye, right? Or how hard it is to take their advice seriously when you don't like them, let alone play for a football manager, let alone train with them five days a week and hear him kind of chew you out in public. It's not good, man. The atmosphere obviously is toxic. He doesn't, it's not, and he's got his favourites in the team, in the squad, like Matt Titch, who he never drops ever, even though they're playing, they've been playing shit for the best part of a year, right? He's got his favourites, like Fellaini, who always plays or who always gets opportunity to try and play, who's always his kind of go-to plan B, which, you know, effectively worked out for him this time round. So there's obviously a toxic environment in that team where the ones that are, are for or indifferent about Mourinho are on one side and the ones that have had these clear clashes and have butted heads with him on the other side. What do you expect is going to happen? And then those interviews just further exasperate that sort of stuff, right? It's just one of those kind of round, round, round we go situations. But yeah, I don't, I don't know when it's going to change. Um... Hopefully, very very soon. I'm assuming if we don't get the Champions League qualifications, they'll sack him. I'm assuming if it ends that way, that's when he'll go. Um, I'm assuming that. I don't think it's going to happen, though, um, because I just think, you know, our club is just fucking brain dead. And they're going to look at it like, oh, who else should we get? There's no available person. Why don't we get someone that it knows about football, that can actually go out there and scour Europe or the world for an actual manager that's actually going to make us play attractive football? Doesn't necessarily need to be someone with a heavy CV, but let's go and actually pluck someone out. Like, you know, an actual good man. Let's not go for the obvious. Like, oh, let's go for Zidane. Why? Like, why? Why are we going for Zidane? Because he managed Real Madrid. Because he's one of their best players. Because he won a, a champion, two Champions Leagues with one, arguably one of the best squads in the world, with, with including Ronaldo. Like, come on, man. This is nuts, bro. Like, really? Is that what we're doing? We're going to go and sack Mourinho because he couldn't manage an entire club and then we're going to ask Zidane to do that when he hasn't done that at Real Madrid. He works only Florentino Perez, who's basically the guy running the ship at that place, right? And he just basically coaches the players. All the commercial aspects of the of the brand, of the brand are completely off um, um, Zidane's table. He just has to coach those players. Just, not just, but he has to you know do the training sessions, get them into shape, and manage them during match days. And he expects to come into United and do a good job. Like, come on, man. That's, that's not going to work. Like, But anyway, what do I know? Let's say about that the better. No, it just gets you angry and pissed off. 